Hey everybody, this is Jerichos, and welcome back to Puppeteer! Last time, we went on a very strange diet, working out from the inside, I guess. We also climbed a crumbling tower and defeated the jack-o'-lantern boss, who turned out to be Nebula, the mayor's daughter. Now, we're in search of the mayor, and we're going to the spookiest part of all, the graveyard. Kutaro survived the most laudious of tasks. A gauntlet of tummy aches and toothaches. After fasting as fast as feasible, he made his way to the graveyard to find the mayor, and hopefully a key to the stolen moonstone pieces. Now back to Kutaro's tale. Hopefully Monkey won't get in our way this time. We'll see. Before his stint as a scientist, General Monkey was a brilliant mime who made everyone laugh. But being laughed at always rubbed him the wrong way. Determined to better himself, he studied hard and used his evil inventions to get in the Moonbear King's good graces. His piece of the Moonstone made him the smartest creature around. Smart enough to build Castle Grizzlestein, and smart enough to turn Halloween Veal's pumpkins into wickedly tempting snacks. Now, within his laboratory in the haunted house, he was combining Kutaro's seven Moonstone shards with the one that General Dog already had to create an abomination unlike any the Moon had ever seen. You know, Moonfolk used to flock to Halloween Veal just for the thrill of it. Of course, once the Moon Bear King rose to power and real terror took hold, tourism took a nasty, nasty plunge. The ghost town turned into a... well, you know... Huh? You see? This place isn't so scary. Now, how exactly are we supposed to get in? Oh, mister? Hey, mister, could you unlock the gate for us? Ah! It... it's open... Here they were, in the scariest corner of the scariest part of the moon. Fortunately, not even the most horrible of deaths could deter brave Kutaro from his search for the mayor. After you! Yes, Kutaro mustered all his courage and faced the dangers ahead. <clears throat> I said, Kutaro summoned all his courage because if he didn't find the mayor and get the key to the haunted mansion, the Moonstone Shards would be lost forever. Clearly, Kutaro needed a little persuasion. Ugh, get your hiney in gear, you chicken! And we have arrived in the graveyard itself. Dauntlessly, which means not in a scared way, Kutaro strode into the graveyard as an owl's plaintive whoos issued from the gnarled and eerie trees. Our hero felt a pair of feline eyes staring at him from the black, glowing, burning holes in him. Amongst the lines of tombstones, still unburied coffins wiggled obscenely. And can I just say, I love the fact that the ghosts kind of acted as stagehands, moving the scenery around with scene changes. Kind of cracked me up. Now to the left here, we've got one of those giant coffins he talked about, with a hook. What's the worst that could happen, huh? You're not gonna open that? Ah! Don't do that! Yeah, a little bit of a fright there. Now off to your left, you'll see an owl. Make sure to inspect it. Ah! We're going to see a couple owls, and you want to make sure to inspect all of them. For now, though, we can't get past this coffin, and we can't grab it, because it's around the other side. We're going to have to go down into the catacombs. Dive in, Kutaro! Someone had dug unpleasantly dank tunnels six feet under. We're not alone. We're not alone. Indeed, something's down here with us. So let's light it up, or light up these candles to see what it is. Finally! A little light. Oh my gosh, that's it! <laughs> yep, disembodied hands walking around. Avoid them, because they will hurt you. 
Also, these are kind of funny looking, but creepy looking spring pads. Bounce on up. And open this coffin for what else but... Of no ghosts. Look, there's a path. Come on. And before you go through the path, you'll notice behind us here a devil statue. A statue? Who would make something this scary? You want to make sure to inspect the statues as well. Much like the owls, you're going to see several of them as we go. I'll show you where they all are. There go the coffins again. In fact, right away, here's the second one. Someone's got seriously bad taste. And, you know what? Let's try and open these coffins. Give it a yank. No! The spiderwebs gummed it up! Yep, we can't open either of these. We're gonna have to free them from the spiderwebs somehow. We're going down and then there was fright! Yeah, and then there was fright instead of light. So we got a spider crawling around here. Avoid him and cut through the web. So, that's how you get it open. And that will free up the coffin. Got to do that with, well, you don't have to do it with both of them, but let's do it with both as we go. Now as we're here, you'll see this giant clove of garlic. Inspect it to get a new head. You! Kind of a potent head. Indeed, smelly garlic head. But we're going to need it. And hey, another spider section. What a tangled web you cleave! The little spiders can hurt you, so try to avoid them. Ah! But they're pretty easy to avoid. Now back to the center area. And let's see what's in these coffins. Start with the left one. <laughs> what yep. was that? Just another giant bony limb. So we didn't actually need the left one, but that's kind of fun. And some more of these guys. This is a great place to get the bomb trophy if you haven't gotten it yet. Also, if you stun them huh, no sweat. with the ground pound, much like with the grapple hook, they'll die in one hit. So, move on to the next area. And then, in a cruel trick of hyperbole, Kutaro found his way blocked by a coffin of epic proportions. Yeesh! Let's leave this one shut! No, I don't think so. I think we're gonna open it. Yank on that cord. Oops! Darn! Guess the coffin will have to stay shut! Oh well! Oh, don't be such a fraidy cat, Picarina. And as you can probably guess, there's another way we have to open it up. We'll get to that in a minute, though. First off, we have a third and final devil statue. When we inspect it... statue? Who would make something this scary? We get the devil head. And a third owl hanging out in this tree. Come on. There we go. Inspect ah! him. For the owl head. We have a whole bunch of new heads going on here. First though, or n not first, next thing, we need to grab the hook and release ah! some bats. Just bats. Okay. A lot of bats. What? Did they live in there? And I completely missed. Let's try that again and aim correctly. Here we go. On up. Ah, why me? Brains. Brains. Let me guess. He eats brains. You want a brain? Who wants a brain brain? And as you can see, flashing in the back there, brains. we've got... Come on, camera. There we go. We've got an opportunity to use the brain head, but we don't have it. So, let's... I'll collect this in a second, and I'll cut it in here. Let's go ahead and flash over to see what happens if we use the brain head. No, you know what? I'm, I'm changing my mind already. I'm going to take care of this guy the normal way, and then I'll show what happens with the brain head. Come on. Walk. Well, I don't, guess you don't have to walk back over. Basically, pull the lever... Get the ghosts coming out again. Climb up high. It's smush, but it lands. Yep, you just gotta keep smashing him. Whenever you do, he'll move a little faster. See that? From skelly to skelly. 
now we've got just one more. Brains. Go on up. Brains. Is that it? Are we done? That takes care of him. Now, let's just cut back and see what happens if we take him on using the brain head. Okay, so we're here with the brain head. Brains. Let's hop on top of his head and see Brains. what it does. Eh, juggling. Brains. Wardrobe change. Um, I feel like this calls for a skeleton closet joke. <laughs> Hello. Yep, it lets us bounce up onto his head. Bounce even higher, and yep, it skips the boss fight entirely. Thanks. And we're back. All right, now move on once the skeleton has been taken care of. They'd scoured the graveyard, but the mayor of Halloweenville was nowhere in sight. Giraffe Girl totally gave us bogus intel. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe he's a little farther on. Well, I can't really do anything with this here. Head to the left. <laughs> Countless hands burst from underfoot, ready to drag Kutaro straight into the dark depths. Oh, nasty! Yeah, evil looking hands, and they will hurt you, so be careful. But, nowhere else we can go except back under. Light up the way so we don't get hit by that hand there. And bounce up high! Who's that kid? It was one of the three tights Kutaro met back in the Black Castle's kitchen. Yep, that is Nod, the yellow-haired one. You can actually tell because it's kind of... He's peeking around there from behind. Let's... Yeah, I'm going to transition real quick and show what happens if we come back here with the Nod head because there's not a real easy way to get the head right here. So, let's show that off. And now that we have returned with Nod's head, let's use it. And see what happens. Little volleyball time. It's a roulette. What are we gonna get? Slam the button and find out. Give me something good. Give me lots of moon sparkles and oh, bunch of heads. Okie dokie. Oh, I think he's a zombie. Uh. <laughs> and he's just dancing around with the heads, apparently. All right, and that's what Nodhead does. Nice little roulette. Anyway, now that we're here, we're going to grab this hook, and we're going to have to follow a line of bats. I'll go ahead and tell you. And that tombstone we saw, you're going to want to slam down onto it from way high up. It can be a little hard to aim it, but see if we can do it here. Also, these fires will hurt you, so be careful. All right, and missed. Oh, okay. Come, come on. There we go. Yeah. So you can get the heads back pretty easily as long as you're quick. So, it can be a little bit tough to aim it, but I think we can do it. Come on. Go. Missed again? Okay. I'm going to try one more time, and if I fail again, I'll just cut to my successful attempt. Come on. Oop, dodge you. There we go. Come on, bats! Yeah, this is something you might have to do a couple times. Alright. Got it! And when you smash it... Oh, I still got hurt. A hundred sparkle appears. And... Because we fell down, we have to go one more time following the bats. Yeah, if you're lucky, you only have to do it twice total, but... I wasn't too good with my aim at first. So move on, we got another coffin we can't really do anything with until... Hey, check it out! Because we got rid of the spiders, the hands are now helping us. They're friendly. They'll even let us bounce! Yep. So, we got a giant coffin here. Let's go ahead and see what or who is inside. I 
want to suck your blood. Oh, you're not a virgin bride. You're not even human. Oh, damn. I hate this stupid moon. No one ever wanders by except puppets and freaks and monsters. Would it kill destiny to toss me just one swimsuit model? Oh, I miss Earth. Oh, there is no sun on the dark side of the moon. Eh? I can't believe I fell for that. Oh, on Earth, we had the screaming maidens, the terrified villagers. Of course, there was the whole business with the crosses and the sharpened stakes, but it all sort of balanced out. Uh, maybe I was never cut out for an immortal life of neck-biting and harems and changing into a giant bat. <laughs> I knew I should have worn a higher collar that night. Not that I didn't enjoy it all at first, but... Oh, talk about your one-way tickets! Still, what's done is done. I am Vampire! A vampire in outer space. I miss when folks were simpler in the head. They would wet themselves at the first flash of my cuspids. Uh, then they had to get enlightened. The gothic castles got knocked down and replaced with condominiums. What is scary about a condominium? Besides the name, you know what I blame? Electricity! Banished darkness right from our world! Damn that Edison! Had to mess with the natural order! And then the television! The personal computer! How is a vampire supposed to be more scary than the internet? Ah, no one gets scared when you rob them of imagination! And let us not forget the game consoles! A blight on the world! Pixel shaders, volumetric lighting, stereoscopic imaging. Ta! Now every 12-year-old has seen carnage real enough to make Jack the Ripper blush. Ha! I simply cannot compete. Oh, poor Dracula. Well, sit there and listen to his whole rant to get the trophy Nosferatu Blues. Yep, don't interrupt him. And, once you're done, and only once you're done, use the garlic head for a little bit of fun. What is that smell? Oh no! Stop! Get away! Ah! I hate Italian food! <laughs> so yeah, not that like garlic is painful to him, he just apparently hates Italian food. Very silly. But since we have cleared away his coffin, we can see another ground pound spot hiding behind it. Head on down. I hear something. There must be something in here. There is. But because of one thing I want to do coming up, I'm going to transition and show this. And... Yeah, I'll show what's going to happen here, and then we'll jump back, because I don't want to change up my heads that I have right now. So we've got something up above us here. Let's find out what's jiggling behind these wooden planks. Ah! That's a lot of skulls! They're lighting up in a specific order. It sounded like the skulls were playing a melody. Maybe we should play the same melody? Yep, if you wait long enough, it'll repeat to make sure you get the right order. Let's do this. Hit the second, the first, the fourth, the third, and then starting with the fifth, just move on down the line, and... They come rolling on down. Ton of skull heads. Now, this is a great opportunity. Let's set all three of our heads to the skull. And we'll unlock a trophy. Triple Ted! That's for having all three heads exactly the same. You could get this earlier, but honestly, I like getting it here because it seems like this room was specifically set up to give you that. Kind of fun. And hey, a whole bunch of moon sparkles too. Anyway, 
back to the action. Okay, we're back. So yeah, a lot of skeleton heads. That's the perfect way to get the triple tet trophy. It, though you could possibly get it earlier in the game. I like getting it here because it's just so easy. So, moving onward. Head up. And right off the bat, we've got the nebula head action. You know what? Will this pot be lucky? Give me a nebula head. No, it gave me another garlic head. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and jump and see what the nebula head does. And now that I've got the nebula head here, let's show off what it does. This one is a little weird, to say the least. We don't have time for the bonus stage. We have to find the mayor's head. <laughs> and giant skeleton hand just plucks us away. This is a weird one. Ah, bungee jumping. This is the core idea behind many an amusement park attraction. After all, who doesn't love a good gravity-induced thrill? The human body was practically made to be tough. And that was not good. But hey, I got the trophy, Lead Sparkleholic. Which, let me double check exactly what that is. Let's see. I think that's for collecting 10,000 moon sparkles. Yes, Lead Sparkleholic is 10,000 moon sparkles. There's ways you can grind it, but honestly, you'll probably come across it naturally as you're playing. So, you know what? I'm actually going to jump out and... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to cut ahead back into the bonus stage, and we're going to do it correctly this time. Let's try this again, shall we? <laughs> Let's get a little farther, I think. Ah, bungee jumping. This is the core idea behind many an amusement park attraction. After all, who doesn't love a good gravity-induced thrill? The human body was practically made to be tied to an elastic cord and hurled toward a sproingy climax. Bungee jumping relieves stress, douses depression, and keeps boring old reality at bay. And it's easy. Young and old can all get in on that bungee action. All you need is what? A doorknob and a rubber band? Get to it, kids! So a whole bunch of these creepy head bouncy platforms. And Nebula is the one showing up giving us the moon sparkles. Kind of fun! She looks like she's having a very good time, too. All right. A little bit more. This one can be a little tricky, but... Whoop. Darn it. I missed one in the middle. Go back. Go back. Don't waste time. There we are. And... Ooh, this is killing a lot of time. Probably... Yep. I was going to say, about to get the stopwatch in a second. But there we go. Managed to clear it all. Nicely done, Kutaro. <laughs> very, very strange bonus stage, but I kind of like it. Now, move over to the side, and right next to it, two head actions side by side. We've got the Devil Head. We've got this one at least, so let's show it right now. The Demon! Wait, was it an angel all along? <laughs> I love that he's like summoning dark lightning and then one zaps him in the head. <laughs> Try not to wield power you don't understand, Kutaro. And also, maybe it's just me, but this makes me think of a weeping angel and that's kind of creepy. So let's examine the angel for the angel head, which by itself is also kind of creepy with the disembodied eyes, wings, and halo. But, you know, take what you can get and move on. Another coffin. What's in here? Check out the wimpy ghost. Go ahead, murder it. All right, I think we can do that. Hey, it didn't work. The ghost transformed into a swirl of darkness and effortlessly dodged Kutaro's attacks. Then, suddenly, a ray of sunlight bounced off the earth and pierced through the dark clouds above. Of course! Light! 
dark things hate the light. Think you can find some way to bounce it at him? I think we can. We can bounce energy. I think with the shield, we can also Silver. bounce light. Now aim the shield at the ghost. Now we can take it down. Simple as that. All that's left is the church. The mayor must be trapped in there. Hmm, you got a good point, Picarina. Let's move on and see if we can find him. But first... Uh, the cloud of bats swelling overhead swooped down and transformed into a horrible weaver. This is a cool design. As you can see, he's got an hourglass that you need what to pull. What are you waiting for? Do the scissor thing! And a giant scythe that he attacks with. Now what you need to do is... What's that? Is, there? Whoop, pull down the hourglass and eventually it'll create light that you can stun him with. But as you can see in the background... Well, yeah, there. You can see it. Let's use the angel head. Cherubim! Look! They've come to save us! Quick! Hit the reaper now while I've got him pinned in the light! And they just create a bunch of light for us. So, zap him! And now that we've done that, cut his cloak! Come on. There we go! And he's down! So, now cut through all the souls. Set those children free. Ooh, barely got it in time. Got him! Reaper down! With a macabre monster vanquished and the graveyard conquered, Kutaro was ready to continue his search for the mayor and the key to entering the haunted house where General Monkey waited. For defeating him, we got the Reaper Head, and you probably saw a trophy popped, Surgical Striker. That is for defeating every single Weaver and not letting any souls escape back into them, so you have to get them all in one go. We've gotten all of them, and some of them were kind of a pain. But, right now, we've got more important things to take care of. Move onward, and hopefully find the Mayor. Thief? You are looking at the mayor of Halloweeville. Excuse me? Daddy! Mayor! Mayor! Daddy's missed you, Susan. Don't call me that. My name is Nebula. Silly girl. Daddy knows what he named you. Susan's a wonderful name. No, Susan is so plebeian. You can call this earthly vessel, but you can never name my soul. My name is Nebula. Nebula of Langada, Wanderer of the Cosmos. <laughs> I think we need to look into cancelling your library card. Susan! Susan! Stop it! Kutaro's efforts had galvanized the ghosts of Halloweeville, and now they rose as one. Armed with torches, they closed in on the haunted house, determined to have the monkey's head. Kill the monkey! Drink his blood. Woohoo! We are on our way. All right, come on, everyone. Let's make that chimp pay. Yeah. Charge! Huh? Are you with me? Yeah. Charge! Yeah. <sighs> Guess it's up to us now. Let's go, Kataro! And so our Kutaro was left to face Monkey's machinations alone. He's not alone. And they just abandoned us. Some might say the mayor's eldritch former estate made the perfect evil laboratory for General Monkey. The more he settled in, the more unsettling the place got. So, um, how do we get in? Huh? The front door? Oh, so I guess you want me to open it. We do, but not yet. 
that's coming next time. We've gone through the graveyard, and now that we've reached the final layer of monkey, hopefully, we're going to tackle that in the next episode. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the channel. I'll see you guys next time.